Hi, welcome to the Big Smith News Watch. This is Focus. My name is Savitri Lakram. And today we're here with the director of the Competition and Consumer Affairs Commission, Mr. Anil Sobio. Hi, uh, thank you again for having me, Savitri. It's always a pleasure to be here on the um, Focus and uh, Big Smith News Watch. Um, as you can see, we have a different locale today <laughs> that goes well with our team that we're going to be talking about. Okay, uh, before we proceed, please tell us a little about what the commission does. So the Competition and Consumer Affairs Commission is a state-funded body. It's uh, funded by uh, through the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce. We're responsible for consumer protection and competition protection within Guyana. And uh, we usually um, we have powers or enforcement powers under two pieces of legislation. It's the Consumer Affairs Act and the Competition and uh, Fair Trade Act. Thank you very much. Uh, today's topic will be the inspection program that the Commission does. Tell us a little about that. Right, so that's, that's why we're outside because uh, we can't inspect uh, places of businesses um, from our office. So it goes well with a team, like I said. So um, part of our enforcement activities is, of course, the inspection um, activities that we conduct. Um, so we actually have to go out in the field and venture into businesses and see what's happening there. So we have team members that are visiting every region from one street to ten and this is a year-round activity. So every week we have someone out there or a few persons out there visiting different, um, different areas and uh, different hubs okay. and different types of businesses, of course. So when we go into a business, um, what do you think are some things that we might be looking for, uh, given our mandate? Okay, um, you would look for the policy of mm -hmm. the policies that are being enforced. Right, some of which are uh, warranties uh, and right. receipts. Uh, correct, correct. So, uh, so we have our checklist. We we enter that um, the place of operation. We're going to see if they're issuing receipts. So it's not just that you issue a receipt. Receipts uh, f to make it um, valid, there are some things that should be on a receipt and some things that should not be in a receipt. So on a receipt you should have the date, sorry, date of purchase, the description of the item, the value of the, um, the money paid for that item. And uh, you might see sometimes, you might see uh, goods not returnable or no refund on a receipt. And I want to uh, assure the consumers out there that's quite illegal and that shouldn't be on a receipt. So we visit a place of business and we notice that something like that is on a receipt. That's an immediate fail for that business. Um, of course, uh, warranty policies um, is something we also look for. It's actually better if you do have a written explicit warranty policy. It's something that we encourage firm businesses to have. And then there's some signs or signage that shouldn't also be up. And if we see those signs, we're also going to fail you on that inspection. So uh, one sign that you shouldn't have up would be, you want to make a guess? Uh, no return. No refunds, no, no refund. returns, right. yes. No, no exchanges, etc. So those are all illegal signs because you, you, under the right circumstances, you are, of course, enabled to, uh, uh, to return. You should um, have a return available to you, providing that the circumstances and the conditions are, are right. Because you're not always going to be entitled to a refund because Suppose you broke the, uh, you took it home and you misused the good, right? Uh, it's just negligence on your part. So you're not going to be entitled to a refund mm -hmm. under that circumstance. But given that the circumstances are right, then yeah, you would be entitled to a refund. So we have our team um, in all the regions. We would have conducted over 800 inspections for the year so far. And we're aiming to hit a 1,200 for the, at the end of the year. So what, what, what do you think happens when we inspect the farm and we find that they're in both cases, compliant and non-compliant, what do you think or suggest we should do or do you think might be the best course of action, Savitri? So for the non-compliant uh, businesses, mm -hmm. I would assume that one of the steps you would take is to issue them a warning if it's their first offense. Correct, correct. So we'd issue a warning to that place of operation. We're going to highlight and list out the uh, deficiencies in your operation. So number one, you don't provide receipts, you don't provide or you do provide receipts and there's some deficiency in that receipt, such as 